Yeah, first of all, uh, great, hard, tough, gutsy win for us in, in, in a rivalry game. And, you know, the irony of it is, and I talked to our team about this, you know, a lot of these kids don't understand the rivalry of a Virginia and Maryland. And growing up in a time when we used to be in the same league together, I understood it. And, and unfortunately, this generation of kids, they switch teams. They don't play on one team anymore like they used to. But, you know, I expected this to be a tough-ass game. And, you know, uh, Tony had his team ready to play. They played with a lot of intensity and effort early. But I'm really, really proud of our team that there was no flinch. Um, you know, we faced a lot of things, a lot of uh, momentum plays during the course of the first half. And one of the things going into this game that we talked about was just staying focused on that play and not letting them become a series of plays. Because you play one play and it dies. And, and our defense had two big stops in the first half, which gave us a chance to stay in the game and stay in the fight. And I knew at some point the offense would get going, and, and we did in the second half. And, you know, to allow no points on defense, beat up, and the defensive staff did a good job of switching the looks up. I think we had only one penalty. Those penalties uh, kept coming early in the first half, but those are the things we can control. And then to create four turnovers uh, was huge for us. So really proud of the way Billy's played. Uh, really, really playing at a high level for us. Uh, the leadership he's shown is, is really helping us on that side of the ball. Really great team win on the road together for the first time and excited to go back home uh, and, and get ready for Villanova and the Shell. With that, I'll open it up to questions. So Brandon on your left. Coach, you said you got a text from Ralph before the game. What did that entail? It was about cookies. <laughs> he said he texted me and he said, you know, my team is always we always struggled when we came to Charlottesville. And he said it was something about they may put something in the cookies. <laughs> and he said he stayed in Richmond his last game and they played pretty well. So I said, Coach, we don't have cookies. So I think uh, we, we missed the cookies, but it was a tough, hard game, is what he was trying to say. <laughs> and and as I know, having been a part of these games for 16 seasons. It's always tough uh, when you play this team. And I, I know for our fans, I'm super excited because I know it means a lot to our people. And then you kind of said a little bit about the momentum, especially in the first half, kind of how back and forth it was. On Calandria's touchdown to close out the first half, what was said at halftime to really not let that sour note transpire into the second half? I mean, I think the big thing is our defense has shown already they gave up some plays early in that half. <laughs> But when they needed to get stops, they got off the field and held them the field goals. And so was I disappointed in the, the, the drive before that? Of course, because that momentum swing. But what I told our team at halftime is that the three things we could control was our effort. I thought that Virginia came out and out efforted us in the first half. And that, that's not anything that I've ever had to be concerned with our team. Then I thought the physicality in which they played they kind of physical with us as well and the penalties. And so those are things that we can control. And I told us, look, if we don't look at the scoreboard, you know, I felt last week we watched the scoreboard a little too much and that scoreboard creates anxiety. And that's the whole piece of this week was all about us is we don't really care about the scoreboard. We don't care about the mistakes. And when we get the game to the fourth quarter and our playmakers should make plays and, you know, we were able to do that. Uh, Mike, uh, defensively, the four takeaways, and there was also a stretch where in the second half where they either went three and out or you guys were able to take the ball away. Preseason, you said that you're gonna the defense was going to have to step up this year. They did tonight. Could you expand on what went right for you guys in that second? Yeah, I mean, they just kept playing. You know, you're going to give up plays. I mean, as we, the, the two areas where the youngest is that corner and O-line. And those have been the two areas the last couple of weeks that, that, that have struggled. We struggled to run the ball on offense early. And then on defense, we struggled to keep the ball over top. And today, I thought we challenged them a little bit more on the outside. We played some other players. Chance Harley got some extended time and really competed. Uh, the big corners against number eight in the boundary. He's one of those big guys that has a catch radius. I thought that we, we played with more confidence um, on the corner position and then on the O-line. Uh, to give them a chance to just be physical, come off the ball with our size, and you know we had to push play going. We had a couple of short yardage situations, and I thought Josh did a good job of feeding our good players the ball. Ty came up big for us. Caden came up big. Also, it took a while for things to open up downfield for Billy in the passing game. What was the key to being able to get things to open up? They were playing deep coverage, and they wanted us to run the ball, and we had to figure out how to run the ball. Um, you know.
know, whether it's, you know, the interior runs, whether we popped an outside zone right near the end of the second half. We've been very A and B gap centric in our run game. And I thought Josh did a good job today. We added some of the outside zone, the plays that we were able to crease and, and, and make a couple of plays that allowed us to get some momentum in the run game. Last week on the third and one, it was a handoff. This week, when you needed that yard, it was the, the turtle push. What uh, do you attribute bringing the turtle push back to? I mean, it's a play that I mean, it's a play that made Billy famous a year ago, where we thought that he couldn't throw or didn't have the ability to throw. But you know what? It's about physicality, man. At some point, you got to line up and not get cute and just say, "Hey, we're bigger. Let's show and, and impose our will on people." Uh, going into this week, you know, not getting those short yardages the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. were something that bothered me as a head coach and an offensive guy to not be able to line up in some big people formations and say we own the line of scrimmage. And today we did that. We, we pushed them through, and, and Billy made a couple of big runs. How much fun do those big guys like Tyshay Johnson and Samuels coming in to block on offense, how does that change the uh, – the mindset of having that out well, there. I think the big piece is, is obviously we've recruited skill really well and to have athletic big guys like we do on defense mm -hmm. and to be able to use the skill set, uh, skill sets that they bring gives us some versatility, which allows us to line up in big people to, to move people off the ball. And today we were able to get it accomplished. All right, Jeff. Jeff, what's up, man? What's up? Hey, made it in. This is a special game. Right. Uh, about Billy's resilience, like, Seems like he can get off to a poor start, have five fumbles in a row, whatever it might be, and he just keeps playing the exact same way, same confidence, same, uh, same yeah. aggressiveness. You talking about Billy, our quarterback? Billy, yeah. yeah, five fumbles. No, I'm saying hypothetically. Oh, shoot, don't go, mean hypothetically. I'm yeah. saying if things go wrong for him, he <laughs> doesn't like, seem to. Uh, no. He has the mind of a coach, Jeff. I mean, we, we always talk about the quarterback has to be an extension of the head coach and the play caller. And with Billy, you know, I, I told the staff when we went out to do bed checks on Friday nights. And last night when I went in to do bed check, you know, he, he and MJ are roommates. And he's at the desk. He's got his earpiece in. He's got his call sheet. He's got notes. And, and we, I call it playing chess. I say, third meeting, what's your first call? He gives me his call. I say, all right, we're playing zero. Where's the ball? What's your adjustment? This kid has the mindset that we have as a coach, as coaches, and having him on the field now and, and the, the confidence that he we have in him to be able to get us in the right situations. We're putting a lot on him, and I really like the way the kid's playing. I like the way that he continues to to lead us on offense, and, and he's doing some special things for us. Take two more on your right, Matt. Hey, coach. Matt, uh, what's up, man? It felt like around the middle of the second quarter, uh, the run game really started to pick up, and started to establish the line of scrimmage a lot more than it had or than you had before then. Um, was that when the play calling you were talking about bringing in some more outside zone, outside run plays? Was that when that started to kick in, or was it something else there? No, I mean, I, I thought the first uh, outside zone play that, that we popped, Roman popped there uh, to score the first touchdown, kind of got us going because we were able to catch them. They were pinching and moving interior-wise to close those interior gaps, and, and we, we, we finally got the ball to the edge. We haven't run a lot of outside zone, and so... You know, for Josh to have that play in and be able to complement what we've done and, and from a self-scout standpoint to know that let's attack the C area a little bit and get the ball on the edge. And, you know, it helped us because it generated an explosive. And we're one of those teams that thrive off explosives. I'd love to see us continue to just put those 10, 11, 12 play drives together. But I also like when we feed guys like Ty and Caden and, and those two big tight ends, uh, Preston. You know, the one catch he had, I just think of that third down or fourth down catch. And, that's what those guys are capable of doing. We got to continue to find ways to uh, get those guys involved a little bit more as well. For Ty, obviously he's not catching anybody off guard this year with his numbers. How is he he's able to even with that target still? It's about it's how he practices. It really is. I mean, if you come watch Ty Felton in practice, uh, the guy gets it. He understands the work that needs to be put in during the week, the deposits, and I mean he's being he's being rewarded and for for the work that he puts in and. Great example for some of those younger receivers. You know, I see Octavian Smith following that trend. I see Caden, even as a veteran player, starting to understand that the habits you create in practice, they show up in games. And, and, and Ty has, you know, since the middle of this summer, he's uh, adjusted a lot of how, of how he prepares himself, his body, and taking care of it from recovery, nutrition. Uh, he's being a pro, and, and it's showing up on tape for us. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.